I hope my screen is visible to everybody and I'm audible also. Great. Done. Okay. So maths is everywhere, an essential part of our lives. So I am Dr. Tanya Bose, Associate Professor at Kara University. So I'll take one hour to present this topic. We are formally introduced to the subject mathematics in school, where learning is mostly theoretical. However, throughout our lives, we begin to appreciate that mathematics is with us from crib to coffin, have its significance in everything from visiting the shops to playing sports. Even if you do not like maths, nobody can deny its importance in today's era. All over the world, we all breathe a sigh of relief once we graduate, leaving farewell to maths lessons. However, the reality is that no one is ever really finished with maths. Maths can seem abstract and overly complex when no link is made with its uses in the real world and this is where many comprehensions stem from. So mathematics is only a construction of the mind. Beauty in mathematics depends on the construction process and not just the final product. So to begin, I will just give the quote of Plato. The highest form of pure thought is in mathematics. As another scientist, or I would say a mathematician, Archimedes, mathematics reveals its secrets only to those who approach it with pure love for its own beauty. According to me, maths is mistakes allow thinking to happen. So many of us may not be liking the subject, they have a phobia over it, but this is actually the real definition, that Marx means mistakes. So mistakes are always allows the thinking to happen. Mathematics is the gate and key to all these answers. Let's see, what is in the beauty of mathematics? Max is simple, maths is elegant, it is symmetric, it has the power and it is universally true. Now, most of you will be thinking that how is math simple? The ones who fear from maths, they will never say that maths is simple. But believe me, if you find interest in this subject, maths is really simple. Have you ever thought why one is called one only? Can you see that one has only one angle in it and hence it is called one? Likewise, let's see two. In two there are two angles and so it is called as two. You can see the concept with three, with four, with five, with six, with seven, with eight, with nine and with zero. There is no angle in zero. So just see, we, all of us, we deal with these numbers every day. But have we ever thought that how many angles do they contain? Or why are they called 1, 2, 3, 4? Why not some other numbers? This is the maths behind these numbers. Let's see the magic of numbers. I will show you some patterns. Look at the first pattern. We have 9 into 9 plus 7 is equal to 88. Look at the next one. 98 into 9 plus 6 is equal to 888. 987 into 9 plus 5 is 8888. See, can you relate it? What is the difference? In the first step, we are multiplying all the numbers with 9. So this is the really same, right? So this is constant. Look at every step. Here it is 9. In the next step, it is becoming 98. So every time I'm increasing the digit, now it is 987. And here, 
we are decreasing it with one. What is your product? Every time you get a new series of eight. So here there were two eights, now we have eight, 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 now we have eight, 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 eight. And if I go on continuing like this, you can see the entire pattern of numbers. Look at the magic. See these numbers, all series of eight. Look at the numbers here, they are decreasing by one at every step. And this side, we are increasing the digits at every step. We started from 9 and in the last place we have 9 to 0. Look at the next one. 1 into 8 plus 1 is equal to 9. 12 into 8 plus 2 is equal to 98. 123 into 8 plus 3 is equal to 987. 1, 2, 3, 4 into 8 plus 4 is 9876. What is happening here? At every step, we are multiplying it with 8 now. And here, the numbers are increasing by 1. So here we had 1, now we have 2, now we have 3, then 4. And here every step, 1, we had now 12, now 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And on the right hand side, what is the product? We are getting 9 in the first step, then we have 98, then we have 987. Then we have 9876 and the pattern goes on like this. Right. Okay. Let's look at the next one. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. 12 plus 21 is equal to 33. 123 plus 321 is equal to 444. 1, 2, 3, 4 plus 4, 3, 2, 1 is equal to 5, 5, 5, 5. Now what is happening here? Here we had 1 plus 1. So in the next step, we are having 12. We are inverting this number. So 12, we are writing it as 21. Look at the sum we are getting is 33. Here we have 1, 2, 3 plus we are inverting it and writing 3, 2, 1. And see what are we getting? 444. Four, four. That means if I have one digit here, the sum is 2. If I have two digits here, the sum is in the form of 3, 3. If I have 1, 2, 3, that means three digits. So we increase it with 1, we get 4. Since there are three digits, so we write 444 four, four, three times. Likewise, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So there are 4 digits. So the answer would be in terms of 5. And since there are 4 digits, we will write 5 4 times. So we have 5, 5, 5, 5. Next, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We invert it. We get 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5 digits. We increase it with 1. We get 6. So we will write 6 5 times. Right? So this is a trick. So you can see the numbers like this. Right? So can you see the magic of numbers? Otherwise, if I have to add them, the ones who are not that good in maths, they will find it very difficult. But this is again a shortcut. Right? Look at the next one. This is quite interesting. See, I'll show you two, three lines and then I'll explain what is happening. What is happening in every step? Can you see that all the numbers are being multiplied with 9876543321? And this side we have all multiples of 9. What is happening on the right side? Since it is 0 and 9, so in the beginning we have 0, at the end we have 9. And in between them, take their difference, take the difference of 1 from 9, you have 8. So you are writing 8 in between them. And how many times you are writing it? Since there are multiples of 9, so we are writing it 9 times. Likewise, when we multiply this number with 18, we are writing 1 and 8 at the corners. Take difference of 1 from 8, it is 7. So we are writing 7 how many times? 9 times. We will check it out. 
Similarly, when we multiply this number with 27, we are writing 2 and 7 in the corners. Subtract 1 from 7, we get 6. So we are writing 6 here 9 times again. Likewise, when you multiply with 36, so your answer will be 3 and 6 in the corners. In between, take difference from 6, you get 5. So write 5 9 times. Similarly, you can see that the result, when we multiply it with 45, then 54, then 63, 72, and 18. So look at this amazing maths. Did you find it in any other subject? I guess no. Okay. Let's look at the next one. 1 into 1 is equal to 1. 11 into 11 is 121. 111 into 111 is 12321. 1111 into 1111 is 1234321. So what is happening? Here, there was only one digit, so we know that 1 into 1 is always 1. What happens here? 11 into 11, so there are two digits. So in your answer, we start from 1, we will go to 2, and then we will again decrease to 1. Right? So we will adopt a triangle method. Right? 111 into 111. There are three digits. So we start from 1, we move to 3, and then we decrease to 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, and then 2, 1. Similarly, 1, 1, 1, 1, 4 digits. So we will go till 4 and then we will come to 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and then 3, 2, 1. Likewise, we have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 into 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So you can see the answer is from 1 to 5 we move on like this and then we decrease on to 1. And similarly, you can check all these patterns. You can check the last one. There are 9 ones here. So in your answer, we start from 1, we move till 9, and then we decrease on to 1. Right? Isn't it amazing? Right? Okay. Let's see the next one. Sorry for the introduction. So, this was the multiples of 5. Next is, look at this pattern. We are multiplying 51 into 51. The answer is 2601. How is it? We are writing it as 25 plus 1 into 100 plus 1 into 1. Next, 52 into 52, it's being written as 25 plus 2 into 100 plus 2 into 2. So our product is 2704. See, if I multiply 52 into 55, it is cumbersome for those who are not from maths. But if I just look at this pattern, 25 plus 2 is 27. So the product will become 2700. And I can easily add 4 to it. So my result is 2704. Likewise, you can see how to write 53 into 53, 54 into 54, 55 into 55, 56 into 56, 57 into 57, 58 into 58, and 59 into 59. So I have taken the numbers from 51 to 59. So look at this amazing part at the got. Let's see the next one. 1 into 9 plus 2 is 11. Next is 12 into 9 plus 3 is 111. 1 to 3 into 9 plus 4 is 1111. So can you check the pattern yourself? What is happening in every step? We are multiplying the numbers with 9 only. So this is fixed. In every step, I am adding 1 here. And here, the consecutive numbers are taken at every step. So earlier we had 1, then we had 12, then we had 1, 2, 3, then 1, 2, 3, 4. 
And what is happening on the right hand side? The first number, the product was 11. In the next step, another one got increased. Then in the next step, we got 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and the pattern moves on like this. So, we play with these numbers every day, but we never see these patterns, right? Okay. So now let's see what is the relationship of maths with architecture. Now the ancient architecture was mainly based on Pythagoras theorem and the golden ratio. So we have many famous monuments which have the concept of golden ratio. So the Parthenon, they had claimed to follow the proportions of golden ratio. Now what is this golden ratio all about? We might have read about this golden ratio, but many of us have never bothered to know what is this golden ratio. So this golden ratio comes from the Fibonacci sequence. This is how a Fibonacci sequence is written. We take one in the beginning and then we go on. The next numbers are achieved by adding to the previous one. So the next number is one. Then we add two and one. We get three. Three plus two, we get five. Five plus three, we get eight. And this pattern is obtained in this way. So how is this golden ratio obtained? So a sequence of Fibonacci ratios are first formed. The ratios are formed by dividing the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence with the number that precedes it. So this was the Fibonacci sequence. So the first ratio that we obtained is, we take up this number, we divide it by the previous one. So we get the ratio 1 by 1, that is equal to 1. The next ratio is 2 divided by 1, that is 2. The next ratio is 3 divided by 2, that is 1.5. The next ratio, 8 by 5, that is 1.6, then 13 by 8, 1.625, 21 by 13, that is 1.6125. So we go on dividing the next one with the previous one and we obtain this ratio. These ratios, you can see that they are converging to a constant limit, which is called the golden ratio. It is also known as the golden proportion or the golden section. And this is again an irrational number. It never terminates itself. So this number is the golden ratio. It has very aesthetic sense. One can observe that the odd terms of the Fibonacci ratio, they are all less than the golden ratio. Look at the odd ones. This is odd. So this is less than the golden ratio. This one is odd. This is again less than the golden ratio. This is odd. This is again less than the golden ratio. And this one is also less than the golden ratio. But however, the even terms of the Fibonacci ratio, they are all above the golden ratio. So you can see that the even terms are 2, 1.67, 1.625. They are all greater than the golden ratio. So this golden ratio, it is a powerful tool as it has a geometric interpretation. This aesthetically appealing ratio is found in much human architecture. It makes the work of art appear balanced and beautiful. Then you can see this famous architecture, the ancient Egyptian pyramids at Giza. They have mathematical proportions either by accident or by design. This is the Virupaksha temple. It's located in Hampi, Karnataka, and it is designated as a UNESCO's World Heritage Center. And you can see that it has a fractalized structure where the parts resemble the whole. This is a famous building in Mumbai. You can see the awesome architecture. It's in the shape of a pineapple. So just assume the maths behind this architecture. Oh, now let's see how Max gets related with dance. We cannot even imagine how that Max related, gets related with dance. Let's see. So the ones who deal with the graphs, so they must believe that if I draw the graph of y equal to a constant number, no, I get a straight line. So look at this dance pose. So this relates to the graph y equal to k. Our participants are requested to please mute yourselves. Kindly mute yourselves. 
look at the next one. This is y equal to x. You get an oblique line passing through the origin. Look at the next one. Y is equal to minus x. Look at the next one. Y is equal to x squared. Y equal to mod x. Y equal to root x. Y equal to under root minus x. Y equal to x cubed. So see how get maths gets related to these dance moves. Let's see a couple of more of these dance moves. So this is the graph for x squared plus y squared equal to something, some radius. y equal to 1 by x. y equal to log x. y equal to 1 by x squared. y equal to e to the power minus x squared. Let's see some others. So we have y equal to e to the power x. y equal to e to the power minus x y equal to sin x, y equal to cos x, y equal to tan x, and y is equal to cos x. So, somehow all of us dance, but we never see that how that maths is related to these dance moves also. Now, how is maths related to music? Now, Pythagoras, he considered a collection of bars each partly filled with different quantities of the same liquid, he observed them on rapidity and smoothness of movements of air vibrations. Then he hit the buses in pairs and listened to the harmonics produced. He associated the numbers to consonants. Pythagoras concluded that the octave, fifth, and the fourth correspond to the ratios 2 by 1, 3 by 2, 4 by 3, in terms of the quotients of the levels of the liquids. So Pythagoras, he used these intervals to create an octave scale of white tones. So on a piano, this scale would be each a white note in the octave. So the ones who play piano, they, they will be agreeing with me that we have these notes and all these notes, they relate to some frequency ratio. And these ratios, they were characterized many years before. Then, the most interesting part, the nature, how maths is related to nature. Mathematics is all around us. As we discover more and more about our environment and our surroundings, we see that nature can be described mathematically. The beauty of a flower, the majesty of a leaf, all exhibit nature sense of symmetry. So you can see that this is a butterfly and look at the symmetry. If I just draw a line over here and I fold it from here, both these parts, they will coincide with each other. So look at the nature's creation of symmetry. Look at the sun slab. So the nature's greatest book is mathematics. The sunflower seeds, they grow adjacently at an angle of 137.5 degrees from each other, which corresponds exactly to the golden ratio. Additionally, the number of lines in the spirals on a sunflower is almost always a number on the Fibonacci sequence. So Fibonacci sequence is a very, very important part. So how it gets related to the architecture and to these natural objects. Look at this cactus. Again, the spirals here, they are again a consequence of the Fibonacci sequence. It's flowers. It's mercury of a leaf. Every day we see these things. And the honeycombs. Have you ever thought why the honeybees, they develop only these type of structures? Honeycombs, they show a specific regular pattern of repeating hexagons. This design is highly efficient as it uses the least amount of wax to store the honey. This is a cross section of a red cabbage 
and you can see multiple Fibonacci spirals in this cross section. So again, the concept of maths is in a vegetable also. Look at the human body. We are bilaterally symmetric. The left part of our body gets resembled to the right part of our body. Look at the starfish, it is radially symmetric. Now, from nature, we move on to the real life applications. Maths, it is used in our everyday lives, from figuring out the amount needed to buy your lunch to calculate the bank's interest. As India, you can see that mathematics helps the civil engineers to build things. They need it every now and then to construct their buildings. Cryptography. As India is transforming into digital India, internet banking is getting more and more of attention these days. So cryptography is again a branch of maths where we study of protecting information using codes to keep our transactions safe. Mathematics, it is a deep crossing store also. Even here, we need maths. But for all the participants who are from culinary arts, maths makes cooking fun. Every now and then, whenever you are cooking, you are using measurements. All these measurements are maths only. How get maths relates to sports? This is a person who is throwing a javelin. So in a javelin throw, the angle between the shoulders and the javelin, it is made, maintained at 45 degrees. The javelin reaches the maximum distance. So this is the concept of projectile motion. So in high level and elite sports, performance analysis tools allow for hundreds of aspects of data to be analyzed in real time. Scoreboard management in every sports is itself mathematics. Have you ever thought that when you are driving a car, where you are using the maps? So a series of calculations that you do, how many miles you travel from your home to your university, how many miles you are traveling per day, how much fuel you are using in the car, how many miles per hour you are driving. So whatever calculations you are doing, everywhere maths is involved. So there is no respite from maths. Now how are newspapers related to maths? If you do not know the basics of statistics, percentages and polls, Deciphering information would be a real challenge. You won't understand their meanings. Maths, it lets you manage your time. Very, very important. Nowadays, nobody has time. All are given 24 hours, but you have to manage your time accordingly. You have to allocate work for every part. So you need maths to manage your time. Now, I'll tell you about some shapes. We all know that the applications of simple shapes like square, rectangle, circle and triangle. I'm not going to tell you about these applications. But we have never thought about applications of other curves in maths. Let's check on hyperboloid. These are the cooling towers. Have you ever thought why these cooling towers are hyperboloid in nature? Why not some other shape? The hyperboloid shape is particularly suited to the cooling tower's construction as the wide base, it provides a large space for the water and the cooling system. The narrowing effect of the tower helps the laminar flow of evaporated water as it rises. This is a mirror, a hyperbolic mirror that has been used for long distance telescopes. It has the property that a light ray directed at a focus will be reflected to the other focus. 
Then we have some spiral shapes. This is a spiral casing. A centrifugal pump, it consists of axis, a impeller, and a spiral casing. The shape of spiral casing is important so as to minimize flow loss in discharge passage. Likewise, we have turbine casings. We have spiral in nature. You can see the spiral rings over here. Spiral casings are also used to direct the flow of water in reaction turbines. Due to the spiral shape of the casing, a whirl is created in the fluid flow, which increases the chance of producing a reaction at the blades. We have cyclides. This is a guitar, a violin, and you can see that the plate, the violin plate arcing, this involves maths. I have quoted a research paper over here. It is an open access paper, so you can assess through it. That this paper tells us about the three-dimensional mathematical modeling of violin plate surface, an approach based on an assembly of contoured lines. So. I myself did not know that this violin plate arcing also involves maths. When I was when I was preparing the presentations, I went through this abstract and I opened that paper, and there was a huge a part a section only in results and discussion which told about the mathematical modeling behind the violin plate arcing. So see how music industry is also using maths. Involutes. This is a gear system. The involutes has some properties that makes it extremely important to the gear industry. If two intermeshed gears have teeth with the profile shape of involutes, they form an involute gear system. The relative rates of rotation are constant while the teeth are engaged and also, the gears always make contact along a simple steady line of force. With teeth of other shapes, the relative speeds and forces rise and fall as successive teeth engage, resulting in vibration, noise and excessive fear. For this purpose, nearly all modern gear teeth bear the involved shape. So nowadays, the gear industry, they are moving on to this shape for the smooth conduct. Next, very important, digital phase recognition. So you can see in this spec I have written that mathematical modeling, invariant theory and algorithms are all behind digital phase recognition. So the most commercial applications they use large databases of faces. Recognition systems have to be computationally efficient. This is where maths comes into. So, I have again got a paper on mathematical modeling of face recognition. You can just go through this paper. This is the algorithm that was stated in the paper. So, I'm sharing it with you. So you can see a mathematical model is a description of a system using mathematical concepts and language. A model may help to explain a system and to study the effects of different components of a system to predict the behavior of the system. So I'll give you a minute to go through this mathematical modeling. So you can see a lot of calculations is done on the face recognition and this is the mathematical modeling behind the digital face recognition okay so now let's see how maths gets related with integration though integration is a concept of mathematics but let's see how it is related our life it is an integration of the rate of change of happiness with respect to time from the process of birth to the process of death. So have we ever thought about it? So life is nothing but it is the integration of the 
rate of change of happiness with respect to time from birth to death. Right? Isn't it interesting? Okay. So, what is the mathematics of life? Life plus laughter multiplied with love and subtract the heat, we get the happiness. So this should be the fundamental of everybody's life. So Max teaches us this. So I'm sure by the end of this webinar, you will believe that intentionally or unintentionally, Max is everywhere. Isn't it? Whether you think about it, whether you do not think about it, there is not somewhere in the world. So, to encourage maths all over the world, two important days are celebrated worldwide. One is Pi Day. It is an annual celebration of the mathematical constant Pi. So, I'm sure everybody is familiar about the Pi constant as it, is, as it comes in junior classes only. So we know that the value of pi is 3.1415, it is an irrational number. So 3, 1 and 4 are the first three significant digits. And hence, we celebrate pi day on 14th of March every year. UNESCO's 40th General Conference decided pi day as the International Day of Mathematics. The second one is the National Mathematics Day. The former Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh, he had declared the year 2012 as the National Mathematical Year and the date December 22 being the birthday of the genius Srinivasa Ramanujan as the National Mathematics Day. So it is often said that mathematics is the cheapest science. It does not require any expensive equipment. All one need is just a pencil and a paper. So with this, we have come to the end of the webinar. I would like to thank all the participants, especially from Chitara, as well as Chitara International School. And especially, I want to thank all the participants, those who are outside Chitara. We have an overwhelming response of 206 participants joining in this webinar. All over India, I would like to mention the cities from where they have come. We have participants from Bihar, Bhubaneswar, Jalandhar, Gujarat, Noida, Gurugram, Saharanpur, Aligarh, Chennai, then Delhi, then we have from Dayalbagh, Bihar, Haryana, Jaipur. Then we have from Baddi, Bhatinda, Mumbai, Badani, Surat, Noida, Karnataka, Bengaluru, Patiala, Chandigarh. Then we have from Ambala also. So the list is long, long and long. So I, thank, I want to thank all of you for actively participating in the workshop and sparing your valuable time. I would also like to thank Dr. Mohit Kumar Kakkar for believing in me and encouraging me to organize this webinar. Last but not the least, my sincere thanks to IT department for their support. Now one important announcement, feedback forms will be mailed to you soon. So you're required to fill the form so that your certificates can be generated. So thank you and stay safe. Thank you so much.